Family at Kajara Forest Retreat, Bento, Malaysia. And as mentioned yesterday, my short sharing today will be on what is karma. Karma is a Sanskrit word that means action. Most people kind of understand it as you reap what you sow, you get what you give, or what goes round comes around. Karma actually is results of our actions, speech and thoughts be it positive or negative. This means that whatever we do now will ripen in the future, whether it's in this uh, life or future lives. Karma will create certain effects and situations for us, but once the effect manifests, the karma is considered to be exhausted or no longer existent. Example, we have if we have the good karma to have a good meal, after we ate, the karma is gone, used up. Or if we have bad karma to trip and hurt our knees. And when that happens, we exhaust the karma and it's gone. Of course, from that fall itself, new karma could be created you know, when you react. Maybe, you know, with anger at the thing that caused your fall. Then you have, to, you have the new karma to contend with. Karma arises from our thoughts alone, as all our actions stem from our thoughts, whether consciously or unconsciously. Example of consciously is giving you giving your money to the beggar to gain good karma, or unconsciously stepping on the bug that you did not notice and you gain bad karma. Good karma is the result of our good actions of benefiting others. It is not necessary to be spiritual to gain good karma. Anyone can generate good karma and experience the effect. If you help someone, say maybe give some money or food to a beggar, you gain the good karma to receive money in the future. Although receiving money is a direct effect of giving money, it is not necessary money that, you know, but may, it may be in other form of uh, help because you have performed an act of help. So maybe in the future you may receive help, you know, when you need it. Another example of accumulating good karma is that maybe giving up your seat to an elderly on the bus or, a ma or maybe a pregnant lady, you know, and a, a resultant of that could be that you receive aid when you need it. Negative karma is created by self-grasping mind. A self-grasping mind is one that only thinks of things, you know, in relations to oneself and nothing else matter. In other words, a mind that only thinks of one's own happiness, one's convenience, one's comfort. Example, when a, when a group of friends, you exert your wish to eat at your favorite restaurant without considering, you know, your friends' wishes or maybe their pre-planned uh, destination. And here's another one, a subtle, subtle one. Helping your, your wife to go shopping in the market. How can, how, you know, you think, how can helping your wife to do shopping, you know, be a negative karma? Well, it could be that you're going, because in going, you're keeping peace at home, you know, to prevent your, your wife from nagging or your wife having an unhappy mood, you know. So, in, in doing that, you are actually keeping it, you are doing it for your own peace. So see how subtle that is. And then people, you know, with a lot of um, self-cherishing mind, only collect negative karma as they seek, only to benefit themselves. According to my guru, His Eminence, the 25th Sam Tuko Rinpoche, those with a selfish mind will collect negative karma, even if they are not doing anything, as their mind is in a constant state of selfishness something new, isn't it? And it gets worse. Rinpoche gave an example of killing an ant, even if it's accidental. If we do not purify the karma by the end of the day, the karma doubles up, and the next day, it'll double up again. So by the time it reaches maybe the 15th day, it could be equivalent to killing a human being. Scary, huh? Can, can you imagine how much karma we will gather without knowing of this fact? If we leave it, it may increase to 
maybe as heavy as killing your parents and it, it eventually it may just be as heavy as killing a Buddha so remember this karma multiplies imagine how much karma you have collected in this life and then extend that to the many 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 past lives that you have had mind-blowing right luckily karma is impermanent and karma can change can be purified Buddha in his compassion has given us methods to purify our karma through our spiritual practice in learning the Dharma we now understand how negative karma arises and as such we need to mindfully stop thinking of our own selfish fulfillment but to focus and to focus in helping others to make others happy it is one thing to say and another thing to practice as how many thoughts pop up in our minds within that minute you know, of how many how many of that thoughts you know are towards our selfish wants or our selfish needs and how many are towards helping others change the way we think for example normally we go to sleep planning for the next day another day of self-fulfillment where to eat what to do to make our day pleasant where to go to enjoy our breaks you know all towards making ourselves happy so instead maybe before going to sleep think maybe what can you do to help your colleague you know as she struggles with her her overload of work or um, maybe you know plan to buy some some coffee you know for your friend or maybe even plan a different car route you know to accommodate your neighbor who's often late because of um, you know bad public transportation you know spend some time to help a charity donate blood or there's so many things you know that could benefit from your help karma are seeds you know that are planted by our actions and before it opens Dharma taught us that we can purify it let's say if you're going to have an accident before the seed for it to open we purify and it stays dormant or go away or even happen in a way that we experience it but not be harmed you know like having a dream about the accident you know where you feel the effects in your dream but not in real life we can purify the karma by relying on enlightened beings such as and this is according to Rinpoche the three Buddhas of long life Namgyalma, Amitya, and White Tara or the very powerful purifying deity Loma Gyoma then Ushuma or Doje Namyong, Namgyong the 35 confessional Buddhas Rajasattva Black Manjushri and Medicine Buddha is a very powerful purification deity it purifies the karma to experiencing natural disasters purifies the karma to experience mental dis disasters too and also purifies the karma to experience physical disasters so medicine buddha is a very powerful object of refuge we can also do supplementary practices for example circumambulations prostrations purifications practices recitations doing meditations cleaning of temples service to the guru cleaning the guru's residence or cleaning the, the guru's body whatever we may choose as our purification practice do it earnestly as we are always collecting karma as shared don't let karma multiply and be the cause to keep us in samsara in sufferings it creates obstacles in our spiritual practices and prevents us from gaining the freedom of enlightenment so practice mindfully and focus on kindness to others i'll be sharing some links for Rinpoche's teachings and please do visit to read further so with that i will end the session today and i will answer some questions
Right, a question from Yin Tio. How can we avoid stepping on small insects on the ground so we don't create bad karma? This, um, if you're mindful, you can, you can avoid the insects, but often we can't. So in our practice, there, there is a purification where we chant the mantra, blow it on your feet, and it helps to bless the insects that you stepped on. So later, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll include that, um, that prayer in my comment section so that you may learn it, learn it and every morning just recite it, blow it on your feet so that throughout the day, if you do something accidental like stepping on insects, they will get blessed. Of course, don't go ghost on purpose stepping on them, you know. Um, from Pastor Jinai, can you please define what a self-cherishing mind is? Mm. Um, as shared, a self-cherishing mind is that um, a person who basically the actions are um, governed by their own own happiness you know their own happiness or their selfish selfish uh, wants or needs you know to make themselves happy and it overrides you know others other people's um, happiness so basically they just do anything you know just to satisfy their their um, comfortable comfortable or I mean their their mind being you know happy so that's basically what self-cherishing is. Yeah, hello Yingping. And Chris Chong, how can we stop karma from multiplying every day? We can stop the our karma from multiplying by doing the purification practices which uh, I've mentioned before. One of them is um, uh, uh, Raja Sattva prayers, that, the mantra that you can chant. So um, Rinpoche has shared before that um, by chanting the, the prayer, let's say if you chant um, 21 times, it will stop the karma from multiplying. And if you were to really apply with good motivation and really focus and, you know, regret and all that, then you it may actually um, eliminate the karma itself. And from Pastor Jinai, how can you purify this type of karma? What makes such purification practices more potent, effective? Um, I think Pastor Jinai means the self-cherishing mind, is it? Oh. But um, to make the practices more potent and effective is when you really, really mean it, you know, you want to stop um, gathering the bad karma, as in um, to practice kindness to others and to benefit others. So in such, when you are doing the purification practices, then it becomes more effective and more powerful because you you really put in the effort to overcome your negative uh, negative um, mind and as such um, when you because um, karma stems basically from our thoughts initially and from there you know the actions take place so when you don't have that negative mind and you are always thinking to benefit others then you won't develop so much karma itself. You, 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 you know, it, it'll be good karma or, you know. And from Pastor Adeline. Okay. Um, she says, uh, she asked, 
may I know the source of this statement? Karma will double up the next day. This was uh, taught by Rinpoche and um, later I can also, I can, I will be giving you the links so you can also visit there. And from Pastor Adeline. Okay, may I know how karma is definite but also impermanent? It's definite because um, it it's, arises from our very action. So anything we do, it will create a karma, so be it good or, or bad. Impermanence in the sense that one is um, exhausted as that um, it arises and some incident, you know, it happens and then it will become exhausted. So that way it's impermanent. Let's say if you have the good karma, then you use it up to for maybe good food, then that good karma is used up. Or maybe bad karma that you have to experience it, and when the incident happened, then um, it's exhausted. So that way it's impermanent. And from Pastor Jinai, how does having a dream about an accident purify our karma? Can you please elaborate on it so that many can, so more can understand this point? Well, karma is um, experienced through um, our, well, ex okay, let's say, um, I think it's better that um, I'm to, to find out more so that I can explain it in a clearer way because currently I do not have the, the, the clear way of answering you. Uh, from Yi Yin Tio, there are so many purification deities. How do I know which one is best for me and how to choose? Mm. All deities are good for purification because they are enlightened beings but there are certain deities that is um, more to specific um, purification due to their aspiration you know when they became enlightened so as such um, it will be good that um, maybe I'll share it with you in the comment section because there are so many and, and also probably in the future I'll do a, a, a short sharing on that as well. Okay, from Valentina, what do you mean by mental disaster? Mm. Okay, mental disasters. This let me get back to you so that I can clarify it better. Well, currently I do not have the answer, so it's better that I clarify it. Okay, from Pastor Shin, shouldn't we help ourselves first before helping others? Even on planes, they tell us to put on our oxygen mask on first in case of emergency before helping others around us. Yes, we should. Because um, it, it's just like um, the path, you know, when we gain, we gain the realizations or, you know, we are doing, we are following the Dharma path to gain enlightenment. So, of course, we will do it for ourselves first so that in order that we know how to help others as well. So, as such, Yes, we do help ourselves first, but not for selfish reasons. That is the, the main point of it, uh, selfishness. And Pastor Jinai? Yeah, haha, that's true, Pastor Shin. They do say that on planes. And Sophie, how do you answer that question? I'm sure many people will ask the same thing. So as I said, you, you do help yourself first, but um, out of necessity, but not out of selfishness.
and Pastor Nero, when we are talking about Prajasattva practice, what do you mean by regret and all that? Um, regret as in you realize that you have done something wrong and that you know it has harmed another and brought on you know something that has affected someone else so with that you 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 really you know feel that regret and that way you know your practice will because when you really do regret you will be re I mean mindful as not to um, commit the same acts you know you you work towards you know eliminate, eliminating that so that would um, make your sorry make your um, purification practice more effective Okay, Pastor Gina, say, sorry, but you didn't answer this question properly. What makes such purification practices more potent and effective? Um, this, I I will answer you later in the comment section, because that way, then um, let me uh, find out more that um, I can answer you in a better way. Um, Valentina, is karma only created through our actions? Does the motivation matter? Yes, of course it does. Because um, um, karma is actually formed, I mean it arises from our thoughts. So if our, our motivation is good, then you know, the, our, the good actions will follow. And if our motivations is not that that good, then you know, bad actions will follow. So in that sense, it um, motivation affects a lot. It matters a lot. And for Pastor Gina, um, if I sit still and do nothing at all, am I creating karma? Yes, you are. Um, it depends on the state that our mind is in. As uh, Rinpoche has uh, shared that, um, let's say if you're constantly in a positive state, then, but anyway, sorry. Um, when you're doing nothing, you're actually creating um, neutral karma. But um, uh, Rinpoche has um, shared that uh, eventually it may be, uh, go into negative karma because um, it is the um, I think uh, let, let me check out the answer and I'll answer you in the comment section and Pastor Adeline may I know your definition of karma is thought considered a form of karma yes it is it um and also like to share with you because a lot of people think thought you know it's formless and you know how how do you, i mean it, how can it be an action I, actually i th i thought of it and you know even in science you can measure your brain wave so actually it is moving it's an action as well <laughs> so but actually but uh, thoughts itself is a form of karma as well because um from there you know your actions comes on it so it's a karma from thoughts action and speech and from pastor Adeline, it is advisable to use a term that you understand for example replace mental disaster after finding out what it means yes i will thank you Uh, Pastor Gina says, how? I'm sorry, which one did you, are you referring to? And Yi Yin Tio, what is a neutral karma? Does it mean that there are more than two types of karma, which is positive and negative? Yes, there is. 
there's a neutral karma which (um) stems but it's better that I I were to look it up and to answer you because currently I do not have a clear answer for you thank you [ah] yes pastor gina says (um) that if one sit still you create karma how this one I will answer you at a later date (uh) later time when I've (um) get the clear answer for you thank you (um) is there any more questions okay from #yi yin teo# does it mean if I'm thinking of something bad even though I did not I don't do it it also creates negative karma yes it does because a thought itself is an action you know in itself so it it does create the ka~ negative karma which is why we need to really be mindful of our thoughts so is there any more questions well if there are more questions I'll answer them later and for now I'll end this session with the completion prayer thank you a dedication prayer